Good morning and welcome to another Sunday. Um, let's pray together that God would speak to us as we read our lesson today. God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity and the freedom to gather together, um, to worship you, and to fellowship together. Lord, we just pray that you would open our ears and you would open our hearts that we receive the message that you have for us to hear today. In your name we pray. Amen. So today, we're going to talk about Samuel. So we've been talking about Samuel because we learned that he was the son of Hannah, that God um, gave to Hannah because she promised to give him back to God, right? So we're going to talk about how God speaks to Samuel, okay? So remember, um, Samuel is in the Old Testament, right? So um, the books of the Bible are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, and then 1 Samuel. That's where you find it, right? So it's in the Old Testament. So make sure you look and find that on your timeline. Um, and then remember that, um, let's remember that we talked about Hannah and how Hannah stayed true to her vow and gave Samuel to God as his servant for life. And as Samuel ministered under Eli, the priest of the tabernacle in Shiloh, God called Samuel and taught him through his word. So Samuel grew up listening to God and thought, and through the life of Samuel, we are reminded to listen to God. So just remember that um, God loved Israel. Those were his people, right? He had saved them and rescued them and cared for them and provided for them. And he also loved Hannah. And it was God's will and plan for Hannah to have a son who would do God's work in Israel. And when Samuel was born, Eli was the priest. So Hannah kept her vow to God and let Samuel stay with Eli at the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle is a place where the Jewish people would come to make sacrifices to God. So Eli's two sons were in line to be the next priest. However, they didn't listen to God. And even though Eli knew that his sons were disobedient, he allowed them to get away with their bad behavior. So because of their disobedience, God would not allow either of Eli's two sons to become the next priest. Instead, God said he would raise up another priest who would be obedient to him, and who do you think this new priest is going to be? Think back to our lesson last week. It's going to be Samuel, right? So let's find out in Samuel chapter 3 how Samuel becomes the priest, okay? So in verse 1 it says, Now the boy named Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there were no frequent visions. So our sins separated us from God, right? God created this perfect place for us to be together, and then we make bad decisions, and we do bad things, and that sin separates us from God because God is perfect, and sin is not perfect, right? So during the time of the judges, Israel didn't listen to God, right? They kept going back and forth. They'd listen, and then they'd say they're sorry, and then they'd stop listening, and then they'd say they're sorry, and then they'd stop listening, and then they'd say they're sorry, and it was this huge roller coaster, right? So the people were so disobedient to God that he did not have a close relationship with them. So how do you think people listen now in 2022? How well do they listen to God? On a scale of 1 to 10, how well do you think that the kids today listen to what God says? Do we know what is important to God and what he thinks about us? Do we listen to God and do things his way, or do we just do whatever we want? Just keep reading and see what Samuel and the Israelites did. So verse 2 through 9 says, At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose, and he went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you have called me. But he, Eli again said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. And now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you again, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
So Samuel had been serving God in the tabernacle with Eli for years. It is though it is thought that Samuel was now at least 12 years old. However, Samuel did not yet have a personal relationship with God, and he didn't know God's word. So wait, how could Samuel live in the tabernacle and not know God? Well, sometimes leaders in the temple were religious, and they knew a lot. They knew of God, and they knew all the right answers, but they didn't really believe and have a relationship with God. And these are two very different things. So, are you religious? Do you go to church and know things about the Bible? Or do you have a personal relationship with God? This means that you know and believe in Jesus as your Savior, and you've asked him to forgive you and to be your Savior. So let's find out what happened with Eli and Samuel. So Eli was old, and he couldn't see very well, and then very late one night, God called to Samuel when he was laying down in the tabernacle, and Samuel thought that Eli was calling him. And when Samuel went to Eli, Eli told him he had not called, and that Samuel should go back to bed. And this happened three times. And the third time, Eli finally realized that it was God who was calling Samuel, and Eli told Samuel how to answer God the next time he called. So in 1 Samuel 3.10, it says, And the Lord came and stood, calling in other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, your servant hears. So a servant listens to his or her master. Are you excited to listen and call yourself as a servant of God? So God will speak to you and me through the Bible. And the Bible is the written words of God. So it goes on to say in 11 through 17 that God gave Samuel a very important message for Eli. He told Samuel that Eli had been disobedient and had not disciplined his sons for their bad behavior. So now Eli's descendants would die at a young age because of their disobedience. So this was a consequence of sin similar to that that we saw with Samson, right? So Samuel was afraid to give the bad news to Eli. And in the morning, Eli asked Samuel what God had said. Let's look at verse 18. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. So Eli trusted God and knew that his way was the best way. Let's continue in verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So God was with Samuel as he grew up, and he taught Samuel about himself through his word. And Samuel listened, and he believed God, and he was obedient to him. So God used Samuel in amazing ways. He became a priest and the last judge. He became a very important prophet in the promised land of Israel. And a prophet, remember, is someone, a very special person, who gives messages that, from God to his people. So think about the differences between Eli's sons and Samuel. So Eli and his sons knowingly ignored God and received their punishment. But Samuel listened to God, he grew in God's word, and he walked in obedience to God. This reminds me of 2 Peter 3, 18a. Do you remember that verse? It says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So because of their disobedience, God would no longer use Eli and his descendants, but God would use Samuel for valuable works throughout his life. Are you willing to listen to God? We need to stay close to God and listen to him by reading our Bible and spending time talking to him. And how do we talk to him? Through prayer, right? So when we do that, when we read our Bibles and we talk to God regularly, he will teach us the most important things. He will teach us things about himself, that he is holy, he is loving, and he is the creator. He will teach us about ourselves, that we are created and loved by him that we can be saved and become a child of God through faith in Jesus, and he'll teach us about the world around us. So the world was made perfect, but it's now broken. We are, love, we are to love our enemies, and that we need to tell others about Jesus. So when we listen to God, we can feel satisfied. When will you listen to God this week? Will you believe him and obey him when you hear him? Let's think back on our lesson. Can you remember where Samuel lived? 
Yeah, he lived in the tabernacle, the place where the Israelites came to worship God and to make sacrifices for their sins. So who was the priest in God's tabernacle that Samuel lived with? That was Eli. Good job. And what were Eli and his two sons like? Were they obedient or were they disobedient? They were disobedient, right? They were disobedient to God. And what happened to Eli and his two sons? Yeah, they didn't live a long life because um, they were punished for that disobedience, right? Did Samuel listen to God? Yeah, he sure did. He spent time in his word, and he learned about God, and he knew God, and became closer to God, and he had a personal relationship with God, and he was obedient to God, right? So, how can you listen to God this week? What two things can we do? We can read our Bible, right? And we can talk to God, right? And he will show us more about himself, right? So for your discovery time today, you have this paper at the back of your packet. And you're going to cut out these two pieces on the black lines, okay? And then what I want you to do is I want you to take this piece and you're going to fold it in half. And you're going to snip on the dotted lines, but don't cut all the way through because you're just making holes, like slits. And then you're going to take this piece and you're going to weave it through those lines. And at the end, it's going to look like this. So there's Samuel sleeping in his bed. And when he wakes up and God calls him, Samuel says, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And we see that in 1 Samuel in chapter 3. He said it a couple of times, right? So Samuel shows us that we can listen. And the more that we read our Bibles and the more we talk to God, the easier it is for us to recognize God's voice and his message for us. So make sure you're spending time this week just reading God's word and listening for his voice as you talk and pray with him. I just pray that you guys all have a wonderful week, and I'll close us in prayer, and let's talk to God and see if he talks back. God, we are just so amazed by your great power. We are amazed at your wisdom. We just pray, Lord, that you would help us to hear your voice, that we would recognize your voice over all the other noise. Lord, we just pray that you would just make clear what you want from us and what you would have us do. We just pray all this in your name. Amen. All right, guys, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.